be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Elden Ring features a lot of different weapons, ways to approach combat, and has some of the most brutal challenges in gaming. So today's question is, can you beat that challenge using only martial arts? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Soldier First Class here. In today's mission, I'll be showing you my first ever challenge run in Elden Ring and the Elden Ring DLC, Shadow of the Erd Tree. Now this challenge involves a few self-imposed rules and restrictions, which we'll go over shortly. But for now, if you enjoy seeing this challenge run, be sure to light the bonfire on that like button, and don't forget to subscribe with notifications set to all so you never miss an upload. Now let's get right into it. By the way, apologies for my voice, I'm sick yet again, and I've also been doing some yelling at a few bosses. Ever since Shadow of the Erd Tree's new gameplay was shown off, I've been wanting to get my hands on the martial arts weapons known as the Dry Leaf Arts and Dane's Footwork. I wanted to challenge myself to get away from the sword and board, strength builds, or even dex builds I was accustomed to. I actually never realized how much easier it is to play with these types of builds until I started using the dry leaf arts. There's a lot of fallback protections these builds afford you, but going barehanded means most of your defense will come from dodge rolling and only really blocking some light attacks. One positive thing I can say about this is that beating my head against a wall actually taught me more about the game than I had ever known before, and I think overall, doing this challenge run has made me a better Soulsborne player. Two key components of this run will be the Ashes of War that can be applied to the weapons. Palm Blast has major hyper armor and can do a massive amount of damage in one hit. And if you're running a multi-strike build, Dryleaf Whirlwind on the Dane's Footwork can be a nasty status effect builder. I've been combining it with the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and the Thorny Crack Tier to do massive damage when doing consecutive attacks, as Dane's Footwork does 4 kicks in a pretty short amount of time. One other Ash of War that is a decent alternate is the Poison Flower Blooms Twice. This holds a poison effect, but also builds up Scarlet Rot proc as well. It also features some hyper armor, but as punishing as some bosses can be in the DLC, the speed of the cast can be a concern. But it's the only form of Scarlet Rot buildup I could find that would work for this setup and challenge run. Unfortunately, there's a few downfalls to these weapons. Even at the top of soft caps, these weapons aren't natively major damage dealers outside of their Ashes of War. You can definitely boost this damage with the right setup, but you unfortunately have to sacrifice some defense for the sake of offense. And unless you're a master dodge roller, you're going to need all the defense you can muster, especially against the final boss of the DLC. To get the most out of these weapons, I was constantly changing their affinity to match the weakness of the boss I was currently dealing with. You also can't use things like grease to add effects to the weapons, which I was not aware of when starting this challenge. This makes proccing Scarlet Rot without pots or weapons with a natural buildup impossible, which is where the Poison Flower Blooms Twice comes in. These factors obviously made this run extremely challenging, besides all of the other restrictions I had placed on myself. But on the subject of restrictions, here are the rules for this challenge run. Rule number one, no spirit ashes, no friends, not an issue, or NPC summons. I can only use my two hands and feet in a 1v1 or two in some cases with the bosses. Rule number two, consumables like exalted flesh are allowed. Exceptions for this rule are throwable weapons such as knives, kukris, or darts. I also can't use throwing or hefty pots. I can still inflict status effects, just only by way of natural weapon buildup. Rule number three, no weapons other than for buff routines such as seppuku. This is dry leaf and Dane's footwork only. I can't use any other weapons that can be used to deal damage. To pull this off on the PS5, I'll be running the base game and the DLC on New Game Plus, that way I have the weapons from the very beginning of the run. Rule number four, all buffs are allowed. This includes Wondrous Physic buffs, Golden Val, Flame Grant Me Strength, and etc. Rule number five, no damage dealing spells or incantations. This means I can't use things like Scarlet Aeonia or any of the available damage dealing spells. And that's it for the rules. With those restrictions, I set off for Limgrave with the idea in mind to get through the base game as quickly as possible and onto the DLC. I rushed over to Stormvale Castle on Torrent to take on Margit, and after one attempt, he was done. After that, I took the short way through all the ballistas and douchebags with flamethrowers and made my way straight to Godric. I did take a little detour to get the Side of Grace for the tower for after Godric for his great rune. One attempt later, the Lord of All That Is Golden was defeated. Afterwards, I made my way through Liurnia and hightailed it to the Rayo Lucaria Academy. First stop, Red Wolf of Radagon. I normally don't like fighting this boss because while it doesn't have that much health, I almost always struggle with its speed. This time, however, this wolf went out without a whimper and it was on to the real final boss of Rayo Lucaria, this stupid fucking carrion knight. 
After making quick work of him, it was time to whisper sweet nothings to my foot queen and gain the ability for rebirth. This surely won't be important for later in the run. It was a pretty uneventful boss fight, though I thought her bloodhound summon was going to cause me some issues. Turns out, it didn't. But we still can't access the DLC just yet, so we still need to defeat two bosses to do so. So it was time to head to the Radon Festival and take out Radon and Little Sebastian. In order to trigger Radon's festival, you need to do it one of two ways. Follow the Ronnie quest line, or what we're going to do, and that's access Alta's Plateau for the first time. After obtaining the two halves of the Dectus Medallion from Fort Height and Fort Faroth, I made my way towards the lift and into Alta's Plateau. I then transported back to Caled and headed to the Radon Festival. For this fight, I went with Dry Leaf Arts because Palm Blast was doing major damage already, and I figured if it's not broken, don't fix it. Palm Blast made pretty quick work of him, and we didn't even see his Meteor Crash for Phase 2. If you have a tankier build, Palm Blast's natural hyper armor will be really nice to just tank damage while unloading major damage in return. This build can also be kind of a glass cannon at times, but we'll be more and less aggressive when we go to Dane's Footwork as our main damage dealer later in the run. After taking out Radon, it was time to take on the Vare questline so we could gain access to Moog. Yes, I know you can just go to Weeping Peninsula as the fastest method of Maiden's Blood, but I'm not a bastard, so I usually go the Four Belfries method. After getting fingered by Vare, I made my way to Moog's domain and ended up changing my setup to go from Flame Art to Bleed, since oddly enough, Moog is weak to Bleed. And then I proceeded to kick his ass back to the Shire. Funny enough, this is where I started to use Dane's footwork more often in the run because the damage output was starting to work wonders. Now it was finally time to enter the Land of Shadow and the Elden Ring DLC. I touched the creepy hand and the gigantic pelvis in the back and made my way to the Land of Shadow. Started off by testing myself against the first challenge a lot of players had when the DLC first released, and that was the Black Jail Knight. He didn't pose much of a threat, though there was a point where I thought I was dead. I then made my way through Bellarat Tower Settlement and off to face the Dancing Lion. Now that I know where to go and have found everything in the game, getting through the game and where you need to go for bosses makes this a much faster run. Not gonna lie, the Dancing Lion kicked my ass several times, but with a little determination and some timely dodging, I was able to squeak out the victory. The problem with this build is that, more than any other weapon, range is not your friend. This makes doing this run even harder, because bosses like this make cameras do dumbass shit, and it's hard to see certain moves coming. But with some luck, I was able to conquer the lion. After the Dancing Lion, it was time for Castellensis and Rolana, the Twin Moon Knight. Like I said earlier, it's easier to beeline these boss fights because I've gotten everything and I mostly remember the route. This fight was so much easier this time around than the first time I fought her, but I also didn't have a blessing level of 20 the first time either. It took only one try and I barely saw her phase 2, but the Twin Moon Knight was retired pretty quickly. Next it was time to go to the Shadow Keep and make our way to Mesmer, but first we had to face my arch nemesis, the Golden Hip Hop Anonymous. Hip Hop Anonymous? Damn you! You gave him the easy ones! Much like it will be with all of the beast fights, doing martial arts only means I have to get in close on bosses like this, and it hits like a truck. Between battling the camera and porcupine needles it shoots out, phase two of this fight gets even more annoying. Dodge. Ah, oh, damn it. Why do I block? Why do I block? I know I can't block with this build. 
Dodge. Ah, oh, god damn it. Let's go. Oh, shit. Come on. Come on. Get out of there. Get out of there. Come on. Don't you dare die to this. Let's go, baby! Fuck you, hippopotamus! You little bitch. Took about three tries and some frustrating camera angles, but the golden hippo was laid to rest, and it was time to get through the Shadow Keep. I made my way through the Shadow Keep, and after dealing with some overdue library books, I finally got to Mesmer, and this is where I hit my first wall of the entire run. Mesmer is fast, and his second phase is even faster, so timing was everything. Between him and the snake, I just couldn't get the dodge roll timing down for the attack, where the snakes flail around you after he summons a pool of toxin around him. If I had a number, I'd say this boss probably took me 40 tries using only dry leaf and Dane's footwork. I finally ended up using Frostbite for this particular fight, because you can cause a large burst of damage to go along with the debuff that the enemy takes 20% more damage for 30 seconds. This helps with the lack of damage output the weapons have, plus keeps the fight from lasting so long. Death after death, I learned more and more about Mesmer's attack windows, which moves I could punish, dodge roll timing, and more. Thankfully, I know he always starts with this move, so... Jump! Dodge. Okay, I can punish that. Holy shit, I just got lucky. Dodge. Dodge. Dodge in. Dodge out. Actually, can I dodge? I'll have to try that next time. I think I can dodge into that spikes one. And dodge. And dodge. Critical, baby. Let's go. Come on. Punish. Ooh, I got the frostbite. Sweet. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Heal, 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 heal. No! Fuck! Come on. Punish, punish. Damn it, I missed! Alright, let's try dodging the opener instead of jumping. Dodge. Oh, well, actually, that worked. Alright, note to self. Okay, punish. There we go. Got a frostbite, too. Okay. I think I can punish that. I can! I can dodge into it. Let's go. Just found a new punish window. Hey, that's fine. We learned that we can punish that, so I'm okay with that. One hour later. Two hours later. Three hours later. Can you move it along? Time cards. Ooh, frostbite proc. Good, 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 good. Run away. Okay. Okay, come on. Oh, come on. Heal, heal, heal. We only got one heal left. Son of a bitch. Punish, punish. Oh my god, don't die. For the love of fuck, don't die. Let's go, baby! Fuck you, Mesmer! Let's go! God, that was the first real wall we hit this entire time. Frostbite proc seemed to be proc'd at the right times for me, and with a little key maneuvers and dodge timings, I was able to finally tear down the wall. Mesmer defeated. This is one of those fights that reminds me that blocking with this build is almost completely pointless. Most boss attacks will either destroy your stamina, deal massive damage anyway, or both. Remember this for later. After Mesmer, it was time to start our way to Romina, Saint of the Bud, but before that, I wanted to test this build on Commander Gaius. We aren't doing every optional boss of the DLC or base game, but since Gaius has given so many people trouble, I wanted to take him on to test my skills. 
After making our way down to the boss arena, I remembered from my initial playthrough that Gaius was weak to Holy. I swapped my weapons affinities to Sacred and started fighting Gaius. Learning the dodge roll timings was interesting because I actually learned that you can dodge roll into the charging attack and come out undamaged if timed perfectly. You can dodge roll through that? Okay, what the fuck? That would have been nice to know. No! I started using this to counteract the charge with mixed results, but it did help me mitigate the massive damage I normally would completely absorb with a shield. Alright, round two, guys. Okay, it's got a tight window, but you can dodge roll it. We know that. We saw that earlier. God, you get no armor whatsoever with that dry leaf whirlwind. God damn it, he hits so hard. God damn it! Oh, let's go, baby! Critical. Oh, I'm gonna pay dearly for this. Oh my god, let's go, baby! Palm Blast for the win! Gaius would actually help me realize the dodge timing for the final boss's opening attack was literally the same way I had dodged Gaius' gravity attack in my initial playthrough. Oh, I dove too early. I dodged too early. It's almost like they were trying to prepare us for it. I then returned to the Shadow Keep to officially make my way to Romina in the Rao Ruins. I'm not gonna lie to you, I hated navigating this maze again, and the only way I've made it through again was because of remembering certain landmarks. After weaving through shadow enemies and rot pests, I arrived at the Church of the Bud to face Romina. When I fought her in the initial playthrough, she was super easy to me, and I was able to beat her in one attempt. However, once again proving how spoiled I was to be using a shield or strength build, Romina bodied me a few times before I got her timing down. She definitely wasn't this difficult on my other build. Oh my god, get her, get her, dodge! Get her, get her, get her! No! Her Scarlet Rot wasn't that big of a problem, even without using the modeled necklace or anything like that. Up to this point, my talisman setups had pretty much all been offensive-minded, so this was no different. Alright, we're almost there. We got full health. We do not need to get stupid. Come on, come on, come on! Let's go! Okay, five or six tries. That is all it took, but it felt like a lot more. Alright. Awesome. Now it's on to Radon and Mikola. I also use the oil soak tier because she's weak to fire, so between that, using the flame art affinity, and loading up on as much fire damage boosting talismans and buffs as I could, Romina finally went down after about 5 or 6 tries. However, after Romina, those setups would massively change and for honestly the first time in this run, I would need to lean more into defense with my talismans and wondrous physics setups. After Romina, I burnt the shadow seal and we were closing in on the end of the DLC in a date with promised consort Radon. After making our way through Anir Elam and getting absolutely bodied by this fucking asshole more times than I'm willing to admit, I finally reached Lita, Dane, and her ally. Alright, dickhead. And let's go! I don't know why I struggle with these guys so much, but I always do. They surprisingly weren't that difficult, and I was able to finish the fight pretty quickly. The time had finally arrived to fight Radon and Mikola. Riding high on beating them in my initial playthrough, I went into this fight way too confident. I started the series of fights for the day with the current Talisman loadout. Dragon Crest Great Shield for 20% extra physical damage negation, Pearl Drake Talisman 3 for 11% elemental damage negation, Golden Braid for 22% holy damage negation, and the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia to greatly raise attack power with successive attacks. I also used the Thorny Crack tier for the same boost, and Opaline Hard tier to give me even more overall damage negation. With this setup, I was hoping to have at least some advantage. Let's take a look at how that went. One hour later.
Oh shit. No! God damn it! But that does. Fuck! Come on, come on. Two hours later. Alright, I'm done fucking around with Radon. Let's do this. Alright, we're gonna respec and then we're gonna make this a bleed build. And we're gonna go after Radon, because fuck that guy. I'm so sick of this. That might be the cleanest first phase I've had in a while. Oh, and a critical? Let's go! Oh my god, this... Why didn't I do this sooner? Run away, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. There's a nice shot on my crotch there. He surprisingly didn't go for the grab that I thought he was going to. Block it. Okay. No! Hey, that was a lot better than it had been. Holy shit. So this build is definitely the one I'm going with, for sure. That was, uh... That was the build. I think this is the one that's gonna take out Radon. This should take no time after this. Two days later. Well, that, uh... Oh my god, we're gonna- No! 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 God damn it, no! <laughs> god damn it! I'm not gonna survive this. Yep. Fuck. Yeah. I'm not- I'm not liking the cast time on it at all. But finally, I had a breakthrough. If I block that without full stamina, the recovery animation is actually faster. So I can punish him sooner when he floats down. God damn it. Okay, I'm okay with that because that's good information to know. That's great information to know, actually. So I didn't realize this, and maybe I should have, but when you block the Light of Mikola attack while having low stamina, the recovery animation is actually way faster than if you tank it with full stamina. This allows you to do the recover animation, recover stamina, and then unload on Radon as he's floating down. This doesn't seem like much, but it can open up some devastating damage with the right setup, and if you've built enough bleed proc up to that point. Knowing this, I started using that every run until I would actually spend stamina before the attack to get this animation every time. I also decided that doing damage was not my problem. It was more so on defense. So with this in mind, I swapped the Rotten Wing Talisman out for the Spell Drake Talisman 3 for 22% more damage negation on magic. I was now as loaded on defense as I was possibly going to be while still maintaining a medium dodge roll. Now it was time for more attempts at the boss. So learning these little tricks, I was able to take advantage of moves I was otherwise scared of punishing. Three days later. And then this happened. Oh my god. And then it happened three more times. No! But I think this one hurt the most. One more hit, one more hit, one more hit, one more hit, one more hit. Let's go! No! No! But after all these heartbreaking attempts, it was finally here. The moment of revenge I had been waiting for. Almost the exact same scenario as my last heartbreaking loss, where I was one hit away from sealing victory only for a move that I had struggled my entire time with to be my undoing. As Radon teleported through me again, I had but one thought on my mind. Not this time, you little bitch, and I charged after Radon like a warrior who knows his time has come. But this time was different. Radon didn't counter with Lion's Claw. Instead, Mikola decided that he wanted the final blow, but what he didn't realize was that days, hours, and minutes spent dying to this boss, learning his moves and punish windows, knowing exactly how quickly the recovery was if I blocked his holy light, all led me to this final moment. I defy you, Heartman! 
One more hit, 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 one more hit. Let's go, let's go! No, 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 come on, 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 come on. Let's go, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Holy shit, I can't believe I actually pulled that off. We just did an entire run of this game. Like, with nothing but dry leaf arts. And Dane's footwork, that's it. Holy shit. Like, this was my first ever challenge run. And I feel like it went really, really well. Uh, sorry about my voice. Uh, I'm sick and also been yelling a lot. So, uh, I had finally done it. I had completed my first challenge run of Elden Ring. I had beaten every major boss required to begin the DLC, but also defeated every major boss on the way to its finale. Radon and Mikola were defeated, and I was truly a martial arts master. If you enjoyed this Elden Ring challenge run, don't forget to light the bonfire on that like button, and be sure to subscribe with notifications set to all so you never miss an upload. I want to do more of these Elden Ring challenge runs, this was just my first attempt, and honestly I know that this video probably isn't of the highest quality, but it, it was my first attempt, so cut me a break here. Thanks again for watching, and for all the latest Elden Ring challenge runs, build guides, and boss fight guides, I'm Soldier First Class, and I'm on to the next mission. Later guys.